Welcome back. It's day 60 of 365 where we study and read the Bible together. And if you're somebody who is struggling to stay consistent with reading the Bible or someone who just wants to further their understanding of the word, this is for you. And you already know what to do. Go ahead and hit the like button so that the word of God can spread to more people. And today we're going to be reading from Deuteronomy chapters 10 through 12. And before we get started, let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you for another day. Lord, we are just so excited to get back into your word and to see what you have for us. God, we just want to say thank you for everything that you have done, everything that you're doing, and everything that you will do in our lives, God. And Lord, if you don't do anything else, you have done enough. Lord, we just thank you for the salvation that you have brought us, even though we are not worthy. We just thank you for loving us from the very beginning. And God, we just ask that you continue to have your will in our lives and continue to guide us on the path that you have set. In Jesus' name, amen. In chapter 10, Moses reflects about the recreation of the Ten Commandments and what the Lord requires from Israel. The Lord only requires that we fear him, that we are obedient to him, that we love him, and that we serve him with all of our heart and soul. And I usually don't try to over define the word fear in the Bible, but I do understand that some people have a hard issue or have difficulties with trying to serve someone out of fear. And that's simply because God doesn't want you to do that. That's not God's intention. God's intention isn't you serve me because you fear me. And when we look at fear, I have like these three R's for what fear is supposed to be. And fear is understanding a level of respect for the Lord, a level of reverence for the Lord. So in defining reverence, we think of the awe, right? The awe and awesome. We look at God in awe of his might and his power and his ability and his his love. Being in awe with Lord is to have reverence for him. And then regard right? Having high regard for the Lord. And when we think of regard, we think of how sometimes we even look at famous people, or we look at people that we admire, or we look at people that we, um, that we respect, or we just have high regard for this person. And everything that they say, it has a little bit more weight to it. Everything that they do kind of means a little bit more um, simply because of their status, their stature, or the regard that we place them in. At that time, the Lord said to me, Hew for yourself two tablets of stone like the first, and come up to me on the mountain, and make yourself an ark of wood. And I will write on the tablets the words that were on the first tablets which you broke. broke, And you you shall put them in the ark. So I made an ark of acacia wood, hewed two tablets of stone like the first, and went up the mountain, having the two tablets in my hand. And he wrote on the tablets according to the first writing the Ten Commandments, which the Lord had spoken to you in the mountain from the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly. And the Lord gave them to me. Then I turned and came down from the mountain and put the tablets in the ark which I had made, and there they are, just as the Lord commanded me. Now the children of Israel journeyed from the wells of Beni Jeachon to Mazira, where Aaron died and where he was buried. And Eleazar, his son, ministered as priest in his stead. From there, they journeyed to Godgoda, and from Godgoda to Jotbatha, a land of rivers of water. At that time, the Lord separated the tribe of Levi to bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, to stand before the Lord, to minister to him, and to bless in his name to this day. Therefore Levi has no portion nor inheritance with his brethren. 
the Lord is his inheritance, just as the Lord your God promised him. As at the first time, I stayed in the mountain forty days and forty nights. The Lord also heard me at that time, and the Lord chose not to destroy you. Then the Lord said to me, Arise, begin your journey before the people, that they may go in and possess the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways and to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command you today for your good. And something interesting is that verses 14 through 17 shows us that there are different levels to heaven. And Paul talks about this as well in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, when he says that there is a third heaven showing us that there is nothing above the Lord our God and that the Lord our God is truly the Lord of Lords and the gods of gods. Indeed, heaven and the highest heavens belong to the Lord your God. Also the earth with all that is in it. The Lord delighted only in your fathers to love them, and he chose their descendants after them, you above all peoples, as it is this day. Therefore, circumcise the foreskin of your heart, and be stiff-necked no longer, for the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of Lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality, nor takes a bribe. He administers justice for the fatherless and the widow, and loves the stranger, giving him food and clothing. Therefore, love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God, you shall serve him, and to him you shall hold fast and take oaths in his name. He is your praise, and he is your God, who has done for you these great and awesome things which your eyes have seen. And verse 22 shows us that the Lord that we serve will do just what he said he would do. Your fathers went down to Egypt with seventy persons. And now the Lord your God has made you as the stars of heaven in multitude. In chapter 11, we see that there is a reward for obedience and a punishment for disobedience, a blessing and a curse. Therefore, you shall love the Lord your God and keep his charge, his statutes, his judgments, and his commandments always. Know today that I do not speak with your children, 
who have not known and who have not seen the chastening of the Lord your God, his greatness and his mighty hand and his outstretched arm, his signs and his acts which he did in the midst of Egypt to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and to all his land, what he did to the army of Egypt, to their horses and their chariots, how he made the waters of the Red Sea overflow them as they pursued you, and how the Lord has destroyed them to this day. What he did for you in the wilderness until you came to this place, and what he did to Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, the son of Reuben, how the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up, their households, their tents, and all the substance that was in their possession in the midst of all Israel. But your eyes have seen every great act of the Lord which he did. Therefore you shall keep every commandment which I command you today, that you may be strong and go in and possess the land which you cross over to possess, and that you may prolong your days in the land which the Lord swore to give your fathers to them and their descendants, a land flowing with milk and honey. For the land which you go to possess is not like the land of Egypt from which you have come, where you sowed your seed and watered it by foot as a vegetable garden. But the land which you cross over to possess is a land of hills and valleys which drinks water from the rain of heaven. A land for which the Lord your God cares. The eyes of the Lord your God are always on it. From the beginning of the year to the very end of the year. And it shall be that if you earnestly obey my commandments which I command you today, to love the Lord your God and serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, then I will give you the rain for your land in its season, the early rain and the latter rain that you may gather in your grain, your new wine, and your oil, and I will send grass in your fields for your livestock, that you may eat and be filled. Take heed to yourselves, lest your heart be deceived and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. Lest the Lord's anger be aroused against you, and he shut up the heavens so that there be no rain, and the land yield no produce, and you perish quickly from the good land which the Lord is giving you. Verse 18 is a reminder of the importance of remembering, walking, and obeying the Lord's commandments with all of our heart and soul. Therefore you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul, and bind them as a sign on your hand, and 
they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall teach them to your children. Speaking of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates, that your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give them like the days of the heavens above the earth. For if you carefully keep all these commandments which I command you to do, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to hold fast to him, then the Lord will drive out all these nations from before you, and you will dispossess greater and mightier nations than yourselves. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads shall be yours. From the wilderness and Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even to the western sea, shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand against you. The Lord your God will put the dread of you and the fear of you upon all the land where you tread just as he has said to you. Behold, I set before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing, if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and the curse, if you do not to obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside from the way which I command you today to go after other gods which you have not known. Now it shall be when the Lord your God has brought you into the land which you go to possess that you shall put the blessing on Mount Gerizim and the curse on Mount Ebal. Are they not on the other side of the Jordan toward the setting sun in the land of the Canaanites who dwelled in the plain opposite Gilgal? beside the terebinth trees of Moreh. For you will cross over the Jordan and go in to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you. And you will possess it and dwell in it. And you shall be careful to observe all the statutes and judgments which I set before you today. In chapter 12, Moses discussed keeping the Lord's statutes, the Lord's place of worship, and to beware of false gods. These are the statutes and judgments which you shall be careful to observe in the land which the Lord God of your fathers is giving you to possess all the days that you live on the earth. You shall utterly destroy all the places where the nations which you shall dispossess served their gods. On the high mountains 
and on the hills and under every green tree. And you shall destroy their altars, break their sacred pillars, and burn their wooden images with fire. You shall cut down the carved images of their gods and destroy their names from that place. You shall not worship the Lord your God with such things, but you shall seek the place where the Lord your God chooses out of all your tribes to put his name for his dwelling place. And there you shall go. There you shall take your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, your tithes, the heave offerings of your hand, your vowed offerings, your free will offerings, and the firstborn of your herds and flocks. And there you shall eat before the Lord your God, and you shall rejoice in all to which you have put your hand, you and your households, in which the Lord your God has blessed you. You shall not at all do as we are doing here today, every man doing whatever is right in his own eyes. For as yet you have not come to the rest and the inheritance which the Lord your God is giving you. But when you cross over the Jordan and dwell in the land which the Lord your God is giving you to inherit, and he gives you rest from all your enemies round about, so that you dwell in safety. Then there will be the place where the Lord your God chooses to make his name abide. There you shall bring all that I command you, your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, your tithes, the heave offerings of your hand, and all your choice offerings which you vow to the Lord. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God, you and your sons and your daughters, your male and female servants, and the Levite who is within your gates, since he has no portion nor inheritance with you. Take heed to yourself that you do not offer your burnt offerings in every place that you see, but in the place which the Lord chooses, in one of your tribes, there you shall offer your burnt offerings, and there you shall do all that I command you. However, you may slaughter and eat meat within all your gates, whatever your heart desires, according to the blessing of the Lord your God, which he has given you. The unclean and the clean may eat of it, of the gazelle and the deer alike. Only you shall not eat the blood. You shall pour it on the earth like water. You may not eat within your gates the tithe of your grain or your new wine or your oil of the firstborn of your herd or your flock, of any of your offerings which you vow of your free will offerings or of the heave offering of your hand. 
But you must eat them before the Lord your God in the place which the Lord your God chooses. You and your son and your daughter, your male servant and your female servant, and the Levite who is within your gates. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God in all to which you put your hands. Take heed to yourself that you do not forsake the Levite as long as you live in your land. When the Lord your God enlarges your border as he has promised you, and you say, Let me eat meat, because you long to eat meat, you may eat as much meat as your heart desires. If the place where the Lord your God chooses to put his name is too far from you, then you may slaughter from your herd and from your flock which the Lord has given you, just as I have commanded you. And you may eat within your gates as much as your heart desires. Just as the gazelle and the deer are eaten, so you may eat them, the unclean and the clean alike may eat them. Only be sure that you do not eat the blood, for the blood is the life. You may not eat the life with the meat. You shall not eat it. You shall pour it on the earth like water. You shall not eat it, that it may go well with you and your children after you. When you do what is right in the sight of the Lord, only the holy things which you have and your vowed offerings you shall take and go to the place which the Lord chooses. And you shall offer your burnt offerings, the meat and the blood, on the altar of the Lord your God. And the blood of your sacrifices shall be poured out on the altar of the Lord your God. And you shall eat the meat Observe and obey all these words which I command you, that it may go well with you and your children after you forever. When you do what is good and right in the sight of the Lord your God, when the Lord your God cuts off from before you the nations which you go to dispossess, and you displace them and dwell in their land, take heed to yourself that you are not ensnared to follow them after they are destroyed from before you, and that you do not inquire after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? I also will do likewise. You shall not worship the Lord your God in that way. For every abomination to the Lord which he hates, they have done to their gods. For they burn even their sons and daughters in the fire to their gods. Whatever I command you, be careful to observe it. You shall not add to it, nor take away from it. But that's all for today's reading. But before we get out of here, I have a daily devotional that could help. As you go through this day, remember, I will transform you. You are no longer a slave to sin. 
for you died with Christ and were set free from the power of sin. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. The forgiveness that you seek is found in my love and grace. Your journey from sin to salvation is a testament to my redeeming power. For it is by my grace you have been saved. Through faith it shall be yours. If this was a blessing to you, go ahead and share this with three other people who need to hear this too. And if you're ready for the next reading, I'll meet you there.